Hello and thanks for joining me. I want to talk about the proposition of a burqa ban in the UK, its feasibility and the arguments for and against, and where I lie with this. Firstly, let me just say from the outset that my position is that I am far more inclined on the side of being banned. I'm not going to say I wanted to be banned outright because I accept it may not be that simple. But I'm definitely sympathetic to being it being banned. Um, bit of context with this: uh, Paul Nuttall and UKIP has proposed that as one of their party policies. Inevitably, they've got a lot of heat for that from the regressive left and from polite commentators. That is, people who, as far as I'm concerned, are really just virtue signalling. Um, so, I'll start off with those who uh, criticise this idea. And obviously the fact that's coming from UKIP gives them ammo because, you know, UKIP to to the left and to centrist is a controversial party. I'm no huge fan of UKIP, but put it this way, um, Chaka Amuna very much represents that sort of um, centrist Labour trend. Um, he would resent the term liberal elite. You know, I'm not going to be crude and throw that around, but... Um, I definitely think he is virtue signalling, and I definitely think he embodies a culture of political correctness that is absolutely um, insufferable these days. But anyway, Chuck Amuna on his Facebook page was attacking UKIP for this. Um, if only Chuck Amuna had the same passion in attacking regressive Islamic practices. Anyway, um, that's what UKIP has proposed that they would ban it. Okay, so critics of banning it tend to make the following arguments. They say it's an attack on freedom of choice. And they say that if you're going to ban the burqa, you should ban, uh, for example, nuns' habits, um, beekeeping outfits, bikers' helmets, and so on. Uh, in other words, they make this analogy that because there's other types of face covering, then why just focus on Muslims? So it's, it's a victimhood narrative. It's the... Islamophobia narrative. Here's my counter to that. Beekeepers, well, that's a profession. They wear the covering to protect themselves from bee stings whilst they're extracting the honey. Um, everyone knows that. They don't wear that when they're going down the street shopping. Nuns' habits, uh, very, very few nuns around nowadays. In fact, that, that's going to be a similar argument we're going to use for women who wear the burqa. Um, but Again, it's different because a nun's habit, you can still see her face, which is precisely why I think it's important to differentiate between the hijab and the burqa. Because sometimes there's lazy terminology in this when we talk about head coverings. We need to be precise about what we're talking about. The burqa is very different from the hijab. I would not be in favour of banning the hijab, not at all, because I don't see that as being any threat whatsoever. Um, I would question some of the the narrative that's used to defend it, for example, about modesty, because that then insinuates that women who don't wear it are not modest. And I think that's problematic, especially for Muslim women who in some ways are being ostracised by their community because they're being seen as not being modest enough. Um, you see all these moves from the left, you know, uh, show solidarity, wear a hijab day. And I'm only talking about hijabs right now, but... You know, this leads into a deeper issue. Well, how about a day of show solidarity with your Muslim sisters who don't, who choose not to wear those things and who receive criticism from sometimes conservative members of their community for making that choice? How about a day of solidarity for women in parts of the Islamic world who are victims of rape and charged with adultery? So I, I really have a problem with this victimhood narrative coming from conservative Muslims. Anyway, it's a false analogy to make these sort of equivalencies with other types of head covering. Again, bikers, um, they use that for protection. Now, in a situation like a bank, they have to remove it. Um, they wear it for covering. They don't walk around everywhere wearing that head covering. Um, with the burqa, in my opinion, that is a political statement. 
It is a statement of separation. It's a statement of saying we reject Western society and Western values. Because this is something that originates in a part of the world that is very different from our own. It's just a fact. And I know that people will make these analogies with what medieval European women wore and what Christian nuns wear, but I think there are very serious and very palpable differences. The fact of the matter is um, Christian women don't get stoned for not wearing head coverings. That does happen in parts of the Islamic world, especially if they're deemed to be loose women, if they're deemed to be adulteresses for being victims of rape. Now, this is just a fact, and no amount of political correctness changes that. There's uh, another point I'd like to raise. Um, by presenting this as Islamophobic, as picking on Muslim women, again, it's very misleading. In Western societies, the vast majority of Muslim women choose not to wear the full burqa. Um, I'm not sure what the sort of percentage would be for the hijab, but again, I wouldn't imagine it's a massive majority if it is a majority at all. I have Muslim friends, female friends, who have no head covering, but they are practicing Muslims. Um, so we need to get away from this misleading narrative that if you attack the burqa, you're condemning Muslim women. That's a false analogy, it really is. Um, now, those who really, really put a big emphasis on the free choice thing, there's a few things I want to say about that. Okay, I grant you that those women who choose to wear the burqa may be doing it from free choice. I find it very difficult to understand that mindset, why you would walk around in a tent, why you would rock, walk around in a garment. It is clearly awkward. God knows how they um, eat. And, you know, I don't care if that sounds mockish because it's a sincere question. I can see it being a deeply... It would be like a man going around in many, medieval chain mail. It's not convenient. But, you know... Um, that to me is one issue. There is a utilitarian issue here. Male jihadists have been known to wear the burqa as a disguise. That's a fact. And I, I do think it's a political message. I think it's a message of isolation. And I really have a problem with the regressive left and with centrists as well, making an issue of whenever a right-wing politician, such as Paul Nuttall, talks about this, they always have whataboutery. Now, they may not necessarily personally believe that the burqa is a good thing, but they run a serious risk of being apologists for the burqa. I think the burqa is an abomination. I think it looks hideous. I think the politics behind it is hideous. And I, I think it has no place in Western society. Now, on the issue of banning it, if it could be done, I'd have no problem with it. I wouldn't lose sleep over it, and I do not think it would be a major violation of liberty. I really don't. But I do accept that it wouldn't necessarily be easy to do. Um, it would be difficult, for example, to stop women wearing it in their own homes. Um, it's hard to legislate on something like that. So uh, my reservations about banning it is basically similar to my reservations about you know, banning Islam, it, it's practically very difficult to do, even with the fact that there is a small, you know, most Muslim women don't wear it, but I, I take it as a statement of isolation. Um, it's a statement that we are keeping ourselves apart from society. In Western society, body language is very important. Now, if you're talking to someone and you cannot see their facial expression, I have to say, if I'm talking to a Muslim woman who's wearing a burqa, I feel quite uncomfortable because I wouldn't be able to register how she is responding to my dialogue. And that would make me uncomfortable. Um, I remember about 10 years ago, Jack Straw got into a bit of a controversy because he asked women in his constituency, Blackburn in Lancashire, to uh, remove their head coverings. And there was a big thing always being Islamophobic. He's asking women to strip, which was a lot of hyperbole. Um, I would also say to feminists and to women who advocate the burqa because they think that they're doing this for women's choice. And unfortunately, the prime minister has pandered to this. You know, she said in the Commons, I'm not going to tell women what to wear. 
I really think that's misguided. I really think it is inherently misguided because I think when women choose to wear the burqa, they're insulting those women who don't. It's almost like glorifying slavery. It would almost be like a Jewish person who, if we're, if we're talking about women's rights, it, it would almost be like a Jewish person becoming a neo-Nazi. And yeah, I know that statement will shock. I don't care. How anyone could argue the burqa is progressive for women's rights, I, I cannot comprehend that. The feminists, instead of constantly attacking UKIP and right-wing parties, should be in the absolute forefront. Come to think about it, where's the Women's Equality Party? They're so keen on women's rights. Why are they not vocally questioning this? When they know damn well that there are women in Afghanistan who are violently targeted by the Taliban for not wearing coverings. So for all these reasons, I think people should think very, very carefully before becoming cheerleaders for the burqa. Uh, Majid Nawaz, who's a man I have a lot of respect for, said he was against a ban. But at least he balanced out by saying he is not a fan of the burqa. The problem with some virtue signaling politicians out there, um, Chaka Amin is an example, they don't put the caveat. They don't say we disagree with you kept proposing to ban this, but that doesn't mean I think this is a good thing. Therefore, they run the risk of being seen as apologists for the burqa, and they can't really complain if that's how they are seen. I don't think that Chaka Amuna actually thinks it's a good thing, but I was pretty frustrated with what he said because he was focusing more on the bigotry, as he put it, of UKIP than in trying to recognise that this goes beyond UKIP. Okay, I'm saying this as a non UKIP supporter. I don't like the burqa. I don't feel comfortable when I see women wearing it. Now, people will say, oh, but you, it, it's their body, their choice. But you're overlooking the fact that in parts of the world, they do not have a choice. So I really have an issue with this constantly being framed as a free choice issue. It's not. And frankly, given that we live in a country where young South Asian women go missing every year in Pakistan, they live in Britain, but they go missing in Pakistan, they end up dead in honour killings. We should not assume that every single woman who wears a burqa in Britain is doing it from free choice. Sure, they will say that, and I've no doubt some of them probably do mean it, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a Stockholm complex going on in there. I think that's the term, Stockholm syndrome. That is when someone is a captive, if I can make this metaphor, when someone's a captive and they start feeling sorry for the, the person who's keeping them captive. I believe that Muslim women who think this is a good idea, it reminds me of a video I saw a while back. Um, women in, I can't remember if it was Egypt or Algeria, it was a country in North Africa. They were actually advocating that Muslim men should beat their wives and if they don't beat their wives, they're not real men. This was coming from women. Incredible. So anyway, I'll leave it there. But I, I really, really think that any politician that calls themselves progressive, any person that calls himself progressive, needs to think very, very carefully before being a cheerleader for the burqa. Um, we may not be able to ban it, but at the very least, we should not be, you know, making out to be some great liber, great symbol of liberty, or making it as a sort of uh, poster for something that should be robustly defended. I have a real problem with that. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Please feel good. Please do feel free to subscribe.